Right, okay, this is an exciting video because there's a big, big change coming and uh, there's a big, big journey to get there. So hitting the road now, um, there's going to be some major shocks, that's all I'm going to say. Not only in choice of club, choice of shaft is the big one, that's the major difference. I can't say no more, it's okay, so hit the road, long journey ahead, well worth it and a big reveal coming very, very soon. Right, from the 20th to the 24th of October, the World Hickory Championships will take place in East Lothian, Kilspindy, Gullen Golf Clubs. And today, I'm at Jack White's for my own custom fit of Hickory Clubs. Right, so I'm up in Jack White's, up in Gullen High Street, and alongside me I have uh, guests of the show, it's Boris. So first of all, Boris, thank you for taking thank some you. time to give us, first of all, a brief sort of history on Hickory Clubs. And the first question I ask for you is when did all start, or where did Hickory Clubs first originate? Yeah, brief history is good, yeah. <laughs> the, yeah, we've got a bit to cover. Yeah, well, it certainly developed on the links. Uh, some say developed in, in the Netherlands in, uh, on the ice right. when ships were waiting. It's, uh, it's uh, certainly sure that we received uh, leather balls from the Netherlands. Right. And it was played on the ice while they couldn't sail. And they were playing it towards a stick in right. the ice. Right. And that was 14th, 15th century. Okay. Yeah. 16th century it's documented that golf was played in Scotland yeah, yeah. and there was a just just moving on a bit uh, so then the last sort of time that hickory clubs were used in a, um, a sort of world world organization event well the last time they were they were winning was with Bobby Jones in yes. 1930 he won the Grand Slam with yeah, wooden yeah. shafted clubs yeah. and his philosophy is that golf is played with wooden shafted clubs right. 1931 Tommy Armour who was a hickory player before he had steel shafts in Canoste and won with those ah, right, in okay. the next year. So because I, I think I read it's in 1929 that's when the steel shafts were approved by the, the governing body. There were steel shafts in 1904 already okay. but they weren't any good ah, right. and then uh, they were with a certain shortness of hickory or the inconsistency of the quality of the shafts they moved to uh, the, the steel shafts, maybe the price point as well. So in 1930, they became, or I think even 1928, they became legal. Right. But it was Bobby Jones who didn't use them. Right. And what? He stuck to the hickory. Yes. Good on him. Good on him. Now, a few things in terms of, I've also read, but you can confirm for me. No numbers. They, the clubs had names. Yes, they had names that developed basically... The earliest names, really, one of them is the Cleek. Yes. And that was a metal shaft, a metal head on a wooden shaft. And uh, I believe the origin of the name Cleek comes from the fact that lobsters are being scored Gathered. out under yeah, the yeah. under the rocks yeah, yeah. with a Cleek. Yeah. And that's how the earliest oh, cleats right. look like. So and a cleek is more like a one iron, isn't it? Is that right? Yeah, it's a long, it's a one iron. It's the, from the cleek. Willie Park developed the the metal-headed putter yes. and patented that. So that was, it is said that he played with a cleek and then came to the use of that shape for yeah, a putter. Yeah, putter, yeah. So that's how we got the metal putter. And then we've got, it's a mid-iron, a mash. Then you have, uh, well, you have, uh, you have a cleek. Yes. You have a driving mashy. Yes. A driving iron. You have a mashy iron, a mashy. A mashy niblick yeah. and a niblick. Okay. And then niblick, is that a pitching wedge or? A niblick would be like a pitching wedge. Yeah. There was no sand wedge, so the niblick you need to get out of a bunker, out okay. of a hazard. 
that was the most lofted club and the heaviest club. Uh, there is different versions like a Jigger, like a, a Spade Meshi, a Sammy, there's right. loads of different clubs but we want to focus on a few yeah. main ones. Okay, and, and, and again, uh, early, the earlier clubs, no grooves in the face, they were purely flat Up to 1895 there was smooth face, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they introduced uh, sort of dots, was it I've seen in the Yeah, it, it was, you know, in the wet, uh, a smooth face comes quite slippery. Yeah. And uh, all of these uh, theories about, uh, you know, how the ball carries better when it has yeah, cuts. Yeah. yeah how you get better grip when the face has holes. All these things were developed around 1900. Right. The socket had the wood, not the splice neck anymore. Right. All the, the woods were spliced all part of that development. until 1904, about six, seven. Then they switched to socket heads. And then the, the last thing just on the, the equipment, the ball, the gutty ball as a, I think it's commonly known, isn't it? The gutty ball was the one that, that brought the change from the feathery. Yes. And uh, then there came the rubber ball, yeah. and then the 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 uh, Haskell, the wound ball right. around 19, uh, 1905 to ten that broke through. So I'm, I'm going to talk about the um, the World Hickory Championships in a minute too. But when they compete, the, the players that compete in those events would they use a a uh, gutty ball or a big? No, they choice? would use a modern ball. Would they? Today everybody plays soft field balls. Those right. are good for hickory play. All ah, right, okay. Mm. So it's not necessary that you play the, the gutty no, ball. No, the part. gutty balls. There is gutty balls. They are smaller. They're one sixty two. Yeah, yeah, I've seen them. Yeah. And they actually have the right proportions for the earlier clubs because right. the people played with smaller balls. Okay. Uh, but it would be a pricey. Yeah, I believe that. Game. So it's a five pound a ball at the moment, is it something like that? Well, there is only a thousand two hundred gutty balls left that is are really? unused and that were a, a recreation from Penfold right. in the early 90s. But there right. isn't any. You have to play with old ones. So what we, we've got three minutes to find a ball at the moment. I think I'd be spending half an hour if I had one of them in the you bag. You spent seven, easy. <laughs> <laughs> Before I give that one up. Yeah. Um, so the, the, Hick, the Hick, we're, we're up here to coincide with the fact Hickory World Championships being played over Kilspindy and Gullen. Um, and uh, you run an event yourselves as well, I don't do you, but what time of year well, is that? Um, we also have an April event, Yes. which is called Jack's Open, it's the tournament of the shop. Yes. And both of these events will draw crowds from all over the it's planet, isn't Chinese, it, yeah. Australian, uh, Canadian, most Canadian, is Swedish really? players, yeah, it's a good and, gathering. Well, well that's what, what, what do you think of the idea, sort of, uh, well, obviously preserving the, the history of the game, the history of hickory shafts and what's your sort of general overview of that? How long will that sort of, that will all this continue for? Uh, I just see it being continued already. I mean, there's, there's a load of clubs, they're all made in Scotland. That's the good thing about it. Yeah. And uh, in, the, in the next step, there would be replicas needed. Yes. There is replicas as well. They're also very good golf clubs. But you kind of enjoy the the history of yeah, it, yeah. and uh, is there a rise in popularity over, over recent years back to the sort of tradition of the hickory? Well, I think the main point is the fact that the modern equipment you hit the ball farther, but the course designs didn't change. You can put a tee back, mm. you can change that a bit, but let's say you play a James Braid course and you play that with hickory clubs, the whole course makes sense and mm. is more fun to play than mm. just trying to outdrive the bunkers yeah, yeah. unsuccessfully. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and then, and then finally, um, Jack White. So first of all, who is Jack White? Jack Born White. He was born in Dealton near by Gullen, and he was the only East Lothian champion. Uh, Musselborough was an East Lothian in the 19th century. Uh, he won the Open in 1904 yeah. in Sandwich. Yes, and he had a, uh, I believe, a shop. Just down the road. He had the shop it? down where the pharmacy is, yeah. and that was a rather popular shop until the end of the demise of the Hickory Clubs. Okay. He gave uh, evening lessons how to maintain them, so people keep on playing them, and then the war broke out, and then wood shafted clubs were completely right. forgotten. So you've opened this shop up. What did you say? Three years you've been here. Yeah. So it's all about the sort of the selling of the clubs. Uh, you you restore clubs. And well, it's about continuing to play with them. Mm. It's a way of recycling, that's what I like about it too, but it's also, it could be a way to improve your game. Yeah. Because you, you will instinctively find the rhythm for the shaft you, okay. you're confronted with. So if a shaft is a bit whippier, you'll, you'll smoothen slow your down, swing, you slow down, 
And as we know, slowing down isn't a bad thing for no, anybody. No, 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 that's right. We all get a little bit carried away at times. So the, the next part of the process is uh, we're going to get fit, if you like, for mm -hmm. our set of golf clubs, which we're going to take out on a course and play. And I say we, Lewis is behind the camera, and uh, we're both going to go through this next part of the process where we'll yeah. get a few clubs together and uh, we'll see you out there on the golf course. Do you have the tailor-made mini driver? <laughs> um, yeah, I do, I do. I'll give you the tailor-made mini driver. Is this one here. Right. It's... Uh, yeah, I'm feeling that all day. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, so that perfect. takes you to 120. That's a very long shaft. Okay. And with some feel, you can start from 120 to 150 with this one. Okay. I can't and promise then, anything. Uh, <laughs> okay, there it is. You pick out the nibbling. Yeah. Butter knife with bounce. <laughs> We're picking a good player. I'll see how you hit that. It has a bit of a Except little bend in the grip, but it's a <laughs> it's a two iron. Let's see how good you are with that. <laughs> and uh, that's a challenge. That's a butter knife without bounce. <laughs> and loft. <laughs> that's, your, that's your wrist gone. That's got no loft at all, I think. Four, stay down. Don't tee up for that one. You, you want to tee it up, yeah? I think you would. Yeah, yeah. Tee. Yeah, Luke, you got one. Don't, don't break it. No, it's not about that, it's about, you know, don't taking a take off. You mean me take? You mean me take? He is really hitting the Bradley Air Driver. 325 yards to the green. Great shot. Look, 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 First, have you hit hickory clubs before? Never. No. So literally, the tee shots you've seen is it on that little part three to start. That's the first time I've ever hit a hickory oh, club. as well. There's a club, isn't it? Yeah. So it's a great track. This is uh, proper again, true links. The right place to be trying these clubs out. First opinions, right? So uh, what are we about? Three shots in. I think I had six on the first. So. I, I was quite. I, I was impressed. Well, I say impressed. I, I was made up that I hit it yeah. first of all. I think it was the main thing, but. I think good, like good, good fit from Boris. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, to be honest, it puts a smile on your face. I mean, it's, uh, absolutely. Yeah. At this stage, very enjoyable. Anyway, let's go and see if we can uh, enjoy the green. This old seventeen, fantastic.
Well, Lou, first experience of uh, Hickory, what do you think? Loved it, loved it, it's great, isn't it? Oh. My, go, my, my kind of golf. Do you know what, it was so enjoyable. And like I said, four, four or five clubs in a bag. Whiskey to start, whiskey to finish. Perfect way, isn't it? Yeah, let's have all this birdie putt. But there's one challenge to go yet. Right, so I did say that we had one more challenge left, and we'll get to that very, very shortly. Before I do that, I have uh, the pleasure of staying in, uh, in Duxin on many occasions when I visit East Lothian. Alongside, I've got Malcolm Duck. Good to see you, Andy. Yeah, and you too. Um, first of all, I just want to talk about Duxin. Great location, perfect for all the East Lothian coastline. It's, um, yeah, Aberdeen's right in the heart of Scotland's Gulf Coast. Yeah, yeah. set that up as a a little bit of a competition to St Andrews and the Home of Golf because yeah. golf really all started at Leith Links and um, the new statue has been um, built there for um, the first captain at Muirfield. That's, that's where life started. The muscle roll course inside the racetrack, that from the first hole was cut yeah. and now we all play into that size of hole all across the world. Yeah. So really, you know, it's all going on in here. Really the Home of Golf. Sorry St Andrews. Yeah. Or the cradle of golf. But you know, Scotland's a home of golf, really. So um, competition's good, but you know. We've got a fantastic stretch here and you've seen I've done lots of videos in here. But what I want to talk about, we'll get like I said, there's a challenge that I want to have a look at. But we, we, we've just been I've just shot a video which is all about um, the history of Hickory Clubs, the fact that the World Championships, the Hickory World Championships has come into this area in, in a few weeks' time. What are your thoughts on sort of the, the history and the preserving the history? of Hickory Clubs. Well again, we talked a minute ago about the, the, the home of golf and where it all started. And all these courses in Scotland have built Hickory Clubs. Yeah, yeah. We talked about Setting the wise. Of, yeah. Mr. Coulthard and Co were in earlier on. We just had the Dunhill Championship and we're already saying it's, it's, it's too easy. Yeah. It's not about life. Yeah. It, it's, 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 yeah. and the more we've new balls, new clubs, new, new equipment, likes there, but actually it's about getting the ball in that size of hole. Yeah. And you play with Hickory's, you did it today for the first oh, time. Great time to play. Yeah, first you know? time. And um, the clubs bend here. Yeah. You could move the ball a lot more. You have fewer clubs. It, yeah. It's quicker. Yeah. And uh, it's just great fun. So I think it's really important that yeah. we do that. And actually the future of golf. I think if more people played with fewer clubs like with Hickory, or went back to Hickory and played with them, I think they really enjoy it. Hickory golf is great for your swing, it's yeah. great for your golf. Well that's what I was just going to say, do you think it teaches people to play the game a little bit better? Absolutely, slows yeah. you down. You, yeah. you hit the Hickory, you've got to commit Rhythm. to your shot, yeah. your rhythm's got to be good, and your tempo's got to be good, yeah. and you've got to slow it down. We've now got to look at the final challenge in this video. I believe it takes place on that bar over there. Not easy. No, no. Not guaranteed you'll succeed and get okay. it on film. Right. But it can be done. It's just a load of fun. And on the names in the wall, yeah, all yeah. that left hand side, they've all done They're the people who've done it. Correct. Will the average golfer be able to do that? We'll find out very soon. For now, thank you to Malcolm. Thank Pleasure, you. Andy. Great to have you. Yeah. Thanks for all the nice videos. Really Enjoyed And uh, we'll get up on that bar soon. Let's finish off with one final challenge in this video. to 120, that's a very long shaft, okay. and with some feet you can start from 120 to 150 with this one. Okay. I can't promise no, no. anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there is. Special club, <laughs> now comes a special club, this is a jigger. Right. This is a bit rusty, but it plays well. It's a shallow-faced mashing, more or less. Small. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's 
fix the ball. It's the center of gravity is below the ball. Yes. The ball will go up. But it's used for ch from chipping around the green okay. up to a long high shot you want to do. Right. You want to approach the green from farther than your nibbler can do. Okay. You try to get under the ball with this. Or you chip it from 120. Yeah. Let it fly 50 meters and roll the rest. Yeah. That's a tool, universal tool for that. Can I ask you a question I didn't get on the, uh, I, I forgot actually, is, the, is, there any, is there a change from the way I would play golf? Um, in terms of technique well, or swing or what, how does it? Only one rule, as slow as you can, okay. you'll have the most fun. So it's more, it's more well, in If you become speed. your inner Schweinehund, the German would say, right. uh, to swing as low as you low can, time. you suddenly feel like you're playing golf because you're in sync with the club. Okay. You feel that way more. It's Fine. more fun. Perfect. Then. Thank you. Do you have the tailor-made mini driver? <laughs> um, yeah, I do, I do. I'll give you the TaylorMade Mini Driver. Is this one here. Right. It's uh, a small little head. The shaft was broken. It was so soft, somebody broke it. Okay. And I put a very sturdy, long man's shaft in it. And that's the TaylorMade Mini Driver. Yeah, yeah. Right. There you go. Beautiful, that, isn't it? And if so you again, play it like... Again, uh, be slightly longer than... It's a bit longer and uh, the head's rather light but gives you fast head speed. Yes. It's more aerodynamical than any modern club. It's beautiful. That's nice. Yeah. Isn't it? And when you hit that straight, it's much, much smoother and you will be able to repeat it. Yeah. When you once, you have to find the, the, the spot in your stance and the speed of the swing for every shaft. When you f find that, then you can. And you adjust to it. Yeah. It's you, for the skilled yeah. golfer. I was just going to ask yeah, a question the again that's just come up from it is that do you think golfers were more skilled that played these clubs or is that too much of a. When it comes yeah. to shot making, it was more of a game. There yeah. was some. No. Some. Another, yeah, and it was match play. Yeah. You know, they didn't. Yeah. They played the course, but they played their pal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, Interesting, isn't it? We'll pick out the Nibley. Yeah. Yeah. Butter knife with bounce. <laughs> <laughs> we pick out. Uh, yeah. Uh, we're talking about special the, clubs. The, the big ball model. Yeah. yeah it's for the 168. It doesn't have to do with any other balls than golf balls. <laughs> uh, this would be the the spade mashy. So to hit it far and low, this would be like a click. And I know you're a good player. I'll see how you hit that. It has a bit of a Except little a bend in the grip, but it's a, it's a two iron. Let's see how good you are with that. <laughs> and uh, that's a challenge. That's a butter knife without bounce. <laughs> and loft. <laughs> that's, your, that's your risk, gone. That's got no loft at all, so that's it. You have a wood, don't you? Uh, yes, yes yeah, 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 you yeah, have yeah. the yeah. You have the tailor made, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm give you a head cover for that. 